I mean, you took this job and you could have got any other one. Well, there's another job I got offered, but I fancied this. Maybe I wanted to prove something. <coughs> prove you're a stupid bastard. This is a job you have to be fit today, sir. He's still trying to chat her up. Should have more sense at his age. What did they teach you at the uni? That wee man's had mere women and you've had wet dreams. And I'll tell you another thing. His name Mug. What would you mean by that? What I'm saying to you is, if you skive the way you've been doing that with your arm, I'll no warn you. Maybe he'll arrange a wee accident for you. He's got a knack. Get driving. Oh, look, Alan Roth, eh? Come on, move it. Christ, that was close. Lucky you missed him. Lucky for him. This big beauty would smash him like a meringue, no even leave a dent. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled for a man mount. Maybe hanging out a windy peeling a banana. <laughs> What a typical, eh? I tell him the corner and he waits at the close. Tell you, be quicker training than a monkey. Well, you'll need to get a bigger fan. Can he see us? Hey, do you want us to get a bigger fan, eh? You don't see this one. <laughs> Why doesn't he tell Andy he can? Why should the monkey do that? He's too stupid. I wouldn't he bet on it? I'm surprised he doesn't get angry about getting called Primo, I know. Andy calls him Primo because it was some boxer. Carnera, heaviest world champion ever. They called him Ambling Alp. He started off as a furniture remover. To learn that in a class at the uni, you know? No. Guinness Book of Records. Right, lads. <laughs> Tap right. Old geezer name of Morrison. Right. Shift your arse, Jumbo. I hope you'll be careful with that. That's an antique, nearly. Don't worry, Mr. Morrison. Your stuff's in good hands. Join the professionals, eh? The professionals? You've been at it a week. Aye, and the monkey came the day before you did. Take the two of to shift this. Come on, sir. See, Primo carrying that over himself. I should run a bloody circus. One piece, I thought it would split. Oh, no, it's a beautiful piece of furniture from the old days when Glasgow was the second city of the empire. Ugh. Not like today. Well, that thing's a liberty. Give you a rupture. <laughs> my dear lady wife bought this at an auction. Oh, it has great sentimental value. Of course, my daughter did not want me to bring it with me, but I told her she'd have to make room for it for her mother's sake. When a woman has a young family, it's inclined to make her a bit selfish. Mm -hmm. Was your old lady a cabinet maker? I beg your pardon? It's all right, Mr. Morrison. What went up must go down, eh? We'll never do it. Uh, even a flaming boy would give you a showing up. <laughs> Don't worry, sir. We'll manage. It's just a matter of planning. What I always say is, there's a knack to everything. <clears throat> Once you get a balance. <laughs> right, that's oh. it. Put it down. <sighs> oh. Right, take a break. You could die doing this. Oh, you, son. You're a horse, eh? And you've earned your corn a day. No way! I was taking my and my share at the front. And you were doing nothing, you bastard. You really are a stupid little prick, aren't you? <laughs> God's sake, that must have been like hitting a brick wall. You be careful. That is a valuable article of furniture. Aye, don't worry, Mr. Morrison. Treating her like a son. OK, lads, back to work. Hey, you two at the front this time. That's an awkward corner. Davy, up the back with me. Come on, move it. Steady. 
easy.